What's up, y'all? Good morning. Beautiful day. Now, what I want to talk about is the future of transportation and automobiles. Uh, just a little bit about myself. My name is Cameron. Uh, I was a service advisor for over four years at a Nissan dealership, national brand, one of the larger Nissan dealerships in the Southeast. And that was my, basically my, my tuition in an education of automotive service consultant which is we write up the oil changes we, we we write up the recalls we call you for your appointment we call you when your part comes in we tell you you need brakes we tell you your car's broken we tell you your car's fine whatever we tell you that's the truth we're not making shit up and people are either there to make money and do the job and just i say that with my foot by the way they're either there just to, you know, make money and say, screw it. I'm not here to, to help people. I just want, I got a job. I'm going to tell you what your car needs, whether you do it or not. I really don't care. Your bill costs this much. Please pay. All right, now have a great day. Don't come back. And then you have the same customers that are, give that kind of treatment and they have an issue and they have to come back. So... The way I was, the way I went about things, was just to look at it as a person in a car. And that's the most simple way to see it is, this person has a car, they either like it or they don't. They either chose this car or they didn't. This is either their first car, their second car, or their last car. But the reason why they have it is because they need it. And that's the whole thing that kind of brings me today is that, you know, people, have these cars because they need them they want them that's really it there's no real reason why somebody would either have a car unless they need it for business transportation personal work health you know getting out getting food vital vital transportation or they they want it they want that car they love that car you know and those there's two different customers and they're there. You got to respect the fact that you know, there's people out there that love their car and want to take care of it. And want to, they want to, they want to go above and beyond. Literally they come to you because they don't know how to take this money that they worked and saved for. And they love their car so much. They want their, they, they feel their car deserves that. And they want to give their car like a gift or a happy meal or a lunchable or whatever their idea of like, but when you, you look at their car and see their car is perfectly fine. The car doesn't need anything. So these are kind of people that go to, like say, I used to work at the parts store before I worked at the dealership. They would come in, they would want these visor things that go on the, the window, which I've ripped mine off. I have one on that side, it's kind of fun, funky. They'll want accessories, deer whistles. They'll want wraps over the steering wheel, seat covers. A K and N air filter. They'll want a special air filter that they think is better, but doesn't really make any bit of difference, and actually can cause more issues later on down the line. But that's maybe another video. But the real purpose of the video that I was getting at here is to talk about people needing and wanting cars. They love it. They hate it. They need to have it. But point blank, period. It's a necessary evil. Well, we're getting to the point nowadays where Ford. I saw a big thing today that got me real bullish on Ford. It's not financial advice. I wouldn't, I didn't buy any shares, although I looked at it. I've been thinking about it. Looked at Tesla, looked at Palantir, looked at all these other emerging industries and businesses. And Ford, I think, is just doing marketing right now. They, they just charged up a Tesla to show that the Ford F-150 has the biggest battery capacity out of any electric vehicle right now, which I hope so. It's a Ford pickup truck. There's no reason why my this could have an engine in it and then also have battery packs all over it and have just as much battery capacity as that Ford and run a welder, jump start a car or power a Tesla or better yet, I would love if I could take this, this, this Nissan Titan and jump start broke down electric vehicles with it or charge them. 
But in all honesty, you don't need a fancy charger to charge them. What you would need is a tow strap. These electric vehicles have motors in all wheels. Every wheel has a motor in it. So as you pull an electric vehicle, it'll actually charge it. Little known fact, you can pull any gas vehicle, can pull an electric vehicle, and it'll actually recharge it from the wheels generating and the power. It's like the reverse of discharging a battery by, you know, powering the motor. This, the motor's being turned and it's actually, it will actually power up the battery of the Tesla being pulled. So there's no point in needing to brag about the capacity of your F-150 battery and having to go up to a Tesla that's broken down on the side of the road. Cause I don't really see too many broke down Teslas on the side of the road. I mean, maybe somewhere else, somewhere other, some other places, but in Florida, it's pretty cut and dry, flat, straight. And the Tesla charger system is pretty um, predictable. And also, I'm sure they have some sort of roadside and all sorts of other stuff. Maybe they got a buddy at the pickup truck that can pick their, tow their Tesla and charge it for them. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that Ford getting into it pretty heavy. Nissan's getting into it pretty heavy. They've been advertising the all-electric Nissan SUV, like a mid-size SUV called Aria. It's going to be coming out, I think, in September. Late this fall. Don't quote me on it. I really don't know, but uh, you know, they're gonna reward the people that get in early. They're gonna give them a gift card or something for gas. And you're gonna get a free year of charging for your, it's really not that much. In all honesty, it's maybe between 250, 300 dollars worth of credits, I guess. Um, but, but yeah, we're really getting to the fact that this is gonna change the paradigm and it's gonna flip electric vehicles eventually. So one of my favorite sayings that I love is in the near future, only rich people are gonna be able to have all electric vehicles and then completely go from gas to electric. After that, only poor people are going to be driving gas vehicles because they, they everyone else is now on board with electric vehicles except for the poorest of the poor people who can't do anything else that are set in the way things are. And then after that, only the rich people are going to have gas vehicles because we've gone from the richest of the rich went to electric middle class went electric the poorest of the poor went all electric and then only when the poorest of the poor got rid of all of their gas vehicles and completely got on the electric spectrum of driving their vehicle only then will the rich people have all these gas vehicles in their collection and i think elon musk even mentioned the fact that people are going to need a special license in the future just to pump gas so that's that's a little crazy oh it's nice and shaded over here Woo, love that shade yeah they said in the future that you're going to need a special license to pump gas now whether that's true or not who knows most likely you know if they someone said it's easy you know someone if, if they say it's easter dye your eggs one of those kind of deals where it's like when they say it you know like elon musk said it's easter you better dye your eggs 